Hi, I'm Frank Rossini. My friend here is Bill Sherman. And this morning we'd like to discuss a few things about how bocce is organized, played, and scored. Uh, we'd also like to demonstrate a few of the more basic throws. And finally, say a few words about basic strategy and tactics. Every game consists of two teams, a green team playing the green balls and a red team playing the red balls. Games are divided into frames of eight balls each, with the red team throwing four balls and the green team throwing four balls. A frame is initiated by the team winning the course of a coin throwing the white object ball known as the polino. The polino is thrown or rolled from behind the foul line to a position beyond the midpoint line of the bocce court and short of the four-foot line. Here at Frenchman's, the four-foot zone is indicated by an area which is painted red. On that initial throw, the polino must also come to rest more than one foot from the court's sidewall. The frame proceeds with the player who threw the polino, then throwing the first of his team's colored balls in an effort to get it as close as he can to the polino. A player from the opposing side then throws one of his team's colored balls, trying to get closer to the Polino. If his ball fails to get closer to the Polino, another player from his team then throws another colored ball, still trying to get closer to the Polino. If he succeeds in getting closer, then a player from the other team will try to get closer to the Polino and so forth, with the frame continuing until each side has thrown all of its four colored balls. At the end of the frame, only the balls closest to the polino are counted. In this way, it's possible for the team winning the frame to score anywhere from one to a maximum of four points. For example, if at the end of the frame the balls are in this position, green would get two points because they're closest to the polino, and red would get none if the balls were in this position, green would get three points. If the balls at the end of the frame were in this position, green would only get one. Only the closest balls to the polino are counted. At the end of the frame, the points are posted on the scoreboard. The game then continues as before, until one team has reached the agreed upon total, whether it be 11, 12, 13, usually no more than 14 per game. In order to win the match, a team usually has to win two games. At Frenchman's, we don't play what's sometimes referred to as tournament bocce, with uh, its multiple foul lines and dead zones where balls are removed from the court and positions have to be reconstructed. Rather, we play a much more relaxed game, as it is played in thousands of Italian-American clubs, parks, and recreation centers across the country. Here at Frenchman's, our game is much more social, uh, with fun for all ages and levels of skill. There are three basic kinds of throws in bocce. There is pointing, rafa, which is hitting the opponent's ball, or palino, and finally, a bank shot. The first and most basic throw is referred to as pointing. The player points his foot at the object of his throw, crouches, and then rolls the ball parallel to his foot. The next of the three basic throws is hitting, or what the Italians refer to as raffa, where the ball is thrown hard along the ground at either an opponent's ball or the polino. Finally, there's the bank shot. This requires that the player be able to judge the right speed and angle needed to hit the object of his throw. Bank shots are often used to get around an opposing team's blocking balls. At Frenchman's, we want to avoid lofting the ball in what the Italians referred to as volo. There are two reasons for this. One is safety. The other is that volo really tears up the court requiring constant sweeping during play. A word about strategy and tactics. Even when you're not throwing, you should 
continue to observe the condition of the court and your opponent's strengths and weaknesses. How are the balls reacting to hitting the sidewall? So forth. Is your opponent able to throw a straight ball over a long distance? Uh, does he have to rely on hitting the sidewall? How are the balls rebounding from the sidewall? All of these things must be watched throughout the course of the game. The team which throws the Polino has a tremendous advantage. For example, the thrower can determine whether or not the game will proceed as a so-called short game, where the Polino comes to rest just over the midpoint, or as a long game, where the Polino comes to rest near the end zone. Once again, these judgments are made dependent upon your assessment of your opponent's strengths and weaknesses. There may be times in the course of the game when you want to forego the effort to um, get another point and settle for what you've already accomplished. Now, the Italians have a term for that. It's an old Italian proverb, meglio avere un uovo oggi che una gallina domani. It is better to have an egg today than a chicken tomorrow. Let me say a word about the dress code in bocce. Any footwear which is suitable for use on the tennis court is fine for bocce. As for the rest of the dress code, as we used to say in Brooklyn, forget about it. Let me say a word about safety on the court. When injuries occur, they are usually caused by stepping on or off the court. So here at Frenchman's, we ask that you enter and leave the court only at the designated areas and hold on to a post when you do it. We hope you'll join us every Thursday morning at 10 for Bocce, and keep watching the Frenchman's website for further events in detail. Ciao.